Hey everyone, hello, it's Mrs. H. Listen, I wanna talk just about tomatoes today. Look, we've got some beautiful ones that are already blooming. In fact, I see a tiny tomato starting. Do you see this little friend right here? <laughs> That's gonna be so great. So every year in my garden, I plant several tomatoes. This is kind of a throwback because as a kid, my dad always had cherry tomatoes along with a, a dozens of other um, plants. And in fact, even now he has like a uh, 1200 square foot vegetable garden at his home in Southern California. It is absolutely beautiful. I'm going to cut in a picture right here of some of the grandkids helping him plant. And, uh, so it, it's, it's a, it's a pretty big deal and it can be quite, um, insane. He has huge pumpkins and, and crazy stuff. This is something we've done always since I was a kid and tomatoes were always, always a part of our garden. This year I'm planting four varieties and the way I choose tomatoes is by what will be interesting to look at while it grows and also what will do well in a pot. Now, I know that sounds silly because most people say, oh, grow things that you're going to eat, except that I don't really like tomatoes. <laughs> so I am only growing tomatoes for my daughter who loves tomatoes and, you know, for my husband, like if we're going to add them to taco salad or something like that. But these are going to be really interesting when they grow. This year I am growing four varieties. This is a yellow pear tomato and they really will look like pears. Um, and they, they'll be about an inch big. And they're just really fun and kind of different. Like nobody would expect to have a yellow tomato. And so it's kind of fun to have in your yard. I'm also growing over here a sun gold cherry tomato. These are prolific producers of about one inch red tomatoes. They'll be great in a salad or for eating while you're working in the garden if you're a big, uh, if you're a big tomato person. And both of these are great for containers. Now you've noticed probably that I've got growing marigolds and basil in with my tomatoes and both of those are to help with pest prevention. So both of these plants will be excellent for keeping away tomato worms. I've never once had a tomato worm because I practice companion planting. So companion planting just means that you find whatever that plant's BFF is and you plant it in there with them. Now, sometimes it's the odor from the plant that keeps the pests away and sometimes it really needs to be planted in the same dirt. So having a plant near them might be helpful, but also having them planted right in that same pot. This this isn't quite as critical if you're planting things in the ground, if you have a ground garden, but when you have a container garden, you've got to be careful to make sure two things. One, that your pot is big enough for all of your companion plants and your main plant, and two, that you've got your companion plants planted right in there. So here I have marigolds, and in with the yellow pear tomato, I have basil, which is not looking so hot. I think it did not do, this one did not do so well. Um, I don't think I covered it when we had a cold snap. So I'll probably trim off those leaves and trim it up and maybe uh, see <clears throat> what else might be going on with that. But I'll clean that up and it'll be fine. Or I'll just get another one to plant in there. So I buy my tomatoes and their companion plants all at the same time from a local greenhouse. And that really is the best place to get them. Find a local farm or nursery where you can buy these things you can get this stuff at a big box store, but you're gonna find more varieties and better, stronger, healthier plants. Whenever I've gotten a plant, especially things like tomatoes, kind of these generic plants you could find at a big box store, like a Home Depot, right? I mean, you could find tomatoes just about anywhere. And I've planted them. They have not done as well as the ones that are grown by my local greenhouse. There are two other varieties I'm growing this year. <clears throat> this one right here that I'm gonna be planting up today is Container Choice. Container Choice is a great larger red tomato and it's perfect for containers, obviously, because it's in the name. <laughs> it's in the name. It's a great one and it's gonna get um, it's gonna get pretty tall. And then also I'm growing Rapunzel tomatoes and these are going to blossom and then um, fruit out and the the tomatoes will hang down like Rapunzel's hair hangs down from a tower. So these will be really interesting to look at. The yellow pear will add some interest to the garden. We'll have something we can dice up for tacos. And then of course the sun gold cherry tomatoes will be perfect for eating while you're working in the garden. If you like tomatoes, I don't really like tomatoes. So <laughs> they're mostly a snack for my kid. Okay. So <laughs> those are some of the tomatoes I'm planting this year. And I'm gonna show you a couple tricks that I use 
when I'm planting tomatoes, I've already shared one, which is I plant some of their best friends with them to help keep the bugs away and keep them growing strong and happy. Another thing that's really important and I did briefly mention this, but it's really true of tomatoes, is to make sure that they have the largest pot available. Sometimes you will buy these pre-planted up by a very well-meaning nursery in a pot this size. And let me tell you, they will not stay watered well enough in a pot that size. They need a lot of water. They need a lot of nutrients. They could definitely use with some fertilizer, um, especially for tomatoes, because they're sort of fussy about what nutrients they need. But to be perfectly honest, if you're planting these in new potting soil at the beginning of the year, you don't really need to add as much fertilizer as you think, and they will be just fine as long as you've given them a big enough pot. So this is a very large pot. And in fact, the other two that I have, I'm gonna be planting in some fabric pots. They'll be about this size, which I believe is a 30 gallon. Hey everyone, here's why you want to buy your tomatoes at the farmer's market. Look at all the varieties that are here and available. So many different varieties. Plus, you can ask really smart people what kind you need for your yard and your containers. Here I am at our local greenhouse. If you're local to the Detroit area, Gray's Greenhouse in Plymouth is my favorite place to go. And here you can just see some of the varieties of tomatoes. They're actually known for their tomatoes. That's one of their uh, one of their popular things that they are known for. They have so many different varieties. You can see so much better than stopping at your local big box store to buy. You've got so many great choices. Here's where, this is where I got my yellow pear and my sun gold. And in fact, love this place so much. They've got a little cheat sheet here on uh, what, what they've got going and what is uh, good for pots and what kind of sizes they are and what you can expect. There's another table here full of different kinds of tomatoes as well. So just so many incredible choices here. And then of course they've got herbs, they've got annuals, they've got perennials. So, and so lots of interesting plants and of course, really knowledgeable people who can help you. So highly recommend finding a local greenhouse, a local farm, somewhere that specializes in these kinds of plants when you're going to buy your tomatoes or really anything else for your vegetable garden because you're gonna get so much more variety. And look at these strong, healthy plants are just amazing. Some of them I can see even have little flowers starting. Um, some One of the ones I bought already has a little tomato on it at home. You can see some flowers coming here. Here's, look, you could take this one home and have tomatoes soon. So tomatoes are happening. <laughs> tomatoes are happening and you have so much great variety if you find a local place to shop. So even though I said I was only planting four varieties this year and I was not going to overplant tomatoes, guess what? I ended up buying some extra tomatoes anyway. I really wanted to find some more red varieties to add to the garden. So we're gonna plant these up and I'll show you my plan and my system for planting tomatoes. The first thing I'm gonna do is take one of those 30 gallon pots and add some soil in from last year. I'm gonna break it up with my shovel. I'm gonna add a little bit of diatomaceous earth in there just in case there's some nasty grubs that are living in there. And I'm gonna add some black magic fertilizer and I'm going to add some lime. Lime is great for tomatoes and quite frankly, when I'm amending my soil from the year before, I put it in and I put in a little too much, <laughs> but that's fine. I took some out and threw it in the pot next to it, which I also need to amend as well. So this soil is really loose. It is not too firm. It's not too compact. So it's going to make a perfect base for the bottom for the bottom of my pot. Then I'm going to go outside and get a big bag of dirt <laughs> and bring in some fresh potting soil to top off the top half of this pot. And I'll sprinkle in a little bit just to take it out of the bag so it's easier to pour and then I'll pour the rest of the bag in. And then I'm gonna loosen it up a little bit and just kind of fluff it up. It gets really compact in those bags and not so badly that you can't use it, but I wanna make sure that it's gonna be perfect for my tomatoes. So I'm gonna loosen that all up and make that all nice and fluffy. And then I'm going to get my tomato plant. Now, tomato plants are fantastic because they can grow roots 
all along their stem. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab my plant in the pot that I bought it in and I'm gonna smush it. Well, first I'm gonna take the tag out and put that in the pot so I remember what variety this is. I'm gonna smush it in the dirt to kind of get an idea of how big the hole needs to be. So leave it in its container you bought it in and then I'm actually gonna make this a little bit deeper than that. Most of the time that would be perfect and you could just plant a plant, but I'm gonna plant maybe a couple inches, you know, several inches, because along there, all of that space, that's where the tomato can send out some new roots. So you're gonna have a really strong tomato plant if you plant it a little bit deeper than just the top of the dirt that you pulled it out in. So plant that in there. It's looking so great already. It kind of came with its own little mini stake. And this one that I'm planting here is Bonnie Best. It is a, it's going to get, it can get, it can get really tall. It's a really tall uh, variety. These tomatoes are going to be rather large, like maybe two inches, and they are really good for making sauces. Uh, I probably won't use them that way because I don't know that I will have enough tomatoes to do that, but um, it's, it's really good for those things. I added a little bit more dirt in here too, just to keep it really stable. And then I'm going to take a look at how it's staked right now. And my decision ended up being that it needed another stake. Um, oh, I forgot. I've got to give it some friends. <laughs> so I'm going to plant some companions or plant BFFs, if you will. And these marigolds work wonders. I have never once had tomato worms or any other problems with pests in my tomato garden because I plant marigolds and I still, I'm still on the hunt for some not expensive basil to add in there. So I left some room also to add some basil. I'm gonna water this really thoroughly. This is a fabric pot. So the whole time I'm watering, I'm watching to see when the water comes out at the bottom of the pot. Then I know I have thoroughly soaked this entire pot and it is thoroughly, deeply, fully watered. I think sometimes it's confusing when things, the instruction is to fully water something. It's like, what does that even mean? And it's to make sure that the water is coming out the holes in the bottom. And in the fabric pot, that's easy to spot because it will come out around the whole side. I've added a bamboo stake. Bamboo stakes are really strong. I reuse them year after year, even though they start looking kind of ragged, but they are really strong. You can put three together to make a little teepee. And then I'm using Velcro tape. I prefer the Velcro tape to any of the vinyl stuff you might use to tie up your plants. It's so easy to use. It comes on a big roll. It's reusable and it's not quite as fussy as the vinyl ties that you can get and you can Velcro kind of loosely and there you go. The very last thing I will do is make a fresh tag for my plant so that I don't forget what it is. Now, this was the one for Containers Choice, but I planted uh, Bonnie Best. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any tomato tips, please leave them below in the comments. I would love to learn them. Don't forget to like, subscribe if you like these videos and tell your friends. Thanks for watching.